The top stories tonight and why news. Opposition groups and potential contenders express their sentiments on President Rodrigo Duterte's acceptance of vice presidential nomination. The House Committee on Health urges the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation to review its policy on the reimbursement claim suspension of hospitals under investigation. The Private Hospitals Association of the Philippines warns that the proposed salary increase of their healthcare workers may result in higher hospital bills of patients. The Department of the Interior and Local Government is now looking into the possibility of taking legal action against individuals offering to reproduce vaccination cards. DepEd utilizes the social media government TV stations and other agencies to encourage enrollees for the incoming school year. The 2020 Tokyo Paralympic Games officially opens. Good evening, Philippines and the world. We are now reporting live from Kazan City. Today is Tuesday, August 24, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William T. First in the news, the House Committee on Health has urged the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation to review and temporarily stop its circular that calls for a suspension of claim payment to healthcare facilities that are subject for, for investigation for fraud. But PhilHealth defended the agency and explained why they need to implement this to uphold auditing procedures in the processing of claims of hospitals to avoid being held criminally liable for income losses. Nelma Ribohok reports. I move that the committee strongly urge the PhilHealth to review and possibly suspend the circular number 2021-0013 without prejudice. The House Committee on Health has approved the motion to review and suspend the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation's memorandum circular on hospitals being investigated for possible fraud. Based on the circular, PhilHealth can suspend payment of claims up to 240 days or 8 months. But PhilHealth President and CEO Attorney Dante Giran explains that such policy has existed since 2016. So nagkakataon ng na sa, sa par, panahon ko na na issue. Siguro, I would say siguro na uh, this was triggered, uh, primarily triggered by number one, yung investigation sa kwan, investigation sa, sa Senado uh, about, uh, about uh, yung, uh, yung findings ng kuha. Dr. René de Grano, president of the Private Hospitals Association of the Philippines, insists that the issuance of the said circular is a mistake. Eh, sa tingin po nga namin, eh, uh, mali ang pagkalabas nito kasi noong po inilabas ito ay yung katatapos lang naming mag-usap at sinasabi po nila na ito ang utang namin sa inyo. Pero right after po noon, lumabas po yung uh, 11, 12, and 13 na mga circulars na nag-pepertain po doon sa mga pagbabayad nila. The Philippine Hospital Association recommends some policies to improve the engagement of PhilHealth to hospitals. Dr. Jaime Almora, PHA's president, said they want another group of experts who will mediate or look into possible violations of hospitals. The administration of due process. We want a third party, unbiased and impartial or the implementation of a jury of medical experts. PhilHealth's Acting Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer Eli Santos expresses willingness to review the circular. We commit, Madam Chair, based on the statement of our beloved President and CEO, Dante Garan, that we will revisit this policy, Madam Chair. And we have continuously met with our partners, healthcare providers, Madam Chair, to to resolve this issue, Madam Chair. Nothing is final, Madam Chair. 
According to Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, who serves as the chairman of the PhilHealth Board of Directors, they will tackle this issue come August 27th in their board meeting. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Private hospitals welcomed the proposal of the Department of Labor and Employment to increase the salary of their healthcare workers. But the group has one condition to the government. Ray Palayo will tell us why. The Private Hospitals Association of the Philippines, or FAPI, has no resort but to collect additional fees to their patients if they will be mandated to increase the salary of their healthcare workers. FAPI argued that they have no other means to source out funds for their operations and expenses. The group also noted that issues pertaining to unpaid claims from PhilHealth adds to their burden. The Grano said that pay hike may only be possible as of this time if the government will help them. But Labor Secretary Silvestre Belli III believes private hospitals can shoulder the proposed pay hike. Kaya naman ng mga private sector hospital yan eh. Pumikita naman sila. Dapat naman siguro kasi maganda naman ang kita nila, lalo na ngayon. Ang daming mga pasyente. So, uh, it's, only, ano, it's only fair that they should give yung ating mga healthcare workers in their sector the same benefits that the healthcare workers in the public sector are getting. Dahil parehas lang naman ang ano ang services that they render. Meanwhile, Philippine Nurses Association said that many private hospital health workers already transferred to public hospitals after the latter increases its salary to grade 15. So, nagkakaroon ng uh, uh, um, uh, shortage yung private hospitals ngayon no? it's because uh, of the imbalance of salary. The Filipino Nurses United, on the other hand, proposes that small hospitals be given government subsidy for the planned salary hike. So, yung mga small hospitals, sa tingin namin, baka pwedeng humingi tayo ng subsidy sa government kung hindi kakayanin ng mga small hospitals. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, funds for the special risk allowances of healthcare workers are already identified and could be distributed by Wednesday. According to Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, a total of 311 million pesos would be sourced from the Miscellaneous Personnel Benefit Fund to finance the SRAs of more than 20,000 healthcare workers. Duque said the DOH is working with the Department of Budget and Management Center for Health Development, local authorities, and hospitals to process the release of the SRA. A former advisor of the National Task Force Against COVID-19 warns of perfect storm after record high COVID-19 cases in the Philippines reported yesterday. Meanwhile, Malacanang says the daily COVID-19 cases in the country is still within the projection. Dr. Tony Liachon believes there is a discordance between the current COVID-19 situation in the country and the policies being implemented by the government. He made the statement following the record high COVID-19 cases in the country yesterday, which reached 18,332. The medical expert warns of a perfect storm if the country would allow increase in the new cases amid threat of Delta variant. However, the palace insists that the Philippines is not the only country experiencing COVID-19 surge due to the more transmissible variant. However, presidential spokesperson Harry Roque says the daily COVID-19 cases is still within the projection. We are within projection for as long as we do not exceed 20,000 per day. No? That is the projection. I would say we are on track. Currently, the Philippines has already utilized 73% of its ICU bed capacity, while Metro Manila has 72%. But Roque said less than 2% of COVID-19 cases need to be hospitalized. Hindi pa po tayo critical. No? So kaya pa po nating alagaan yung mga magkakasakit. That is what we mean po by, by living with the virus. Talaga pong nararian yung virus na yan hanggang hindi pa natin nakakamit ang population protection. Pero ang paghahandaan po natin, dapat mabigyan natin ng uh, tulong at kalinga yung mga seryosong magkakasakit.
The Duterte administration stresses that there are no strategies in combating the pandemic, but intensified implementation of health protocols, preventive measures, and vaccination will help us to lower down the cases. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Filipinos will soon have the privilege to buy COVID-19 jabs developed by Pfizer-BioNTech. Once Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines become available in the market, prices may vary compared to the existing cost. Aiko Miguel explains why. Malacanang expresses confidence that Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines may soon be available in Philippine market. This after the United States Food and Drug Administration gave its full approval to the American-made vaccine. In an online press briefing, presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said the full approval of Pfizer will hasten the approval process in the Philippines FDA to make it available for commercial use in the country. Ano pong ibig sabihin nito? Well, magiging commercially available na po ang Pfizer. Now, bagamat kinakailangan bigyan pa rin ng commercial uh, use approval ng Philippine FDA ang Pfizer, ito po ay mapapabilis. The Philippine Food and Drug Administration expects Pfizer BioNTech to submit their certificate of product registration or CPR application in 1 to 2 months time. Once a CPR is granted, Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines can be sold to pharmacies, clinics, and hospitals at 1,300 pesos for two doses, including the syringe that will be used for the inoculation. Pwede naging maging commercially available no, yung vaccine. Maaari na siyang ibenta privately. So, hindi ko lang alam kung ano yung magiging effect sa presyo. Of course, sinasabi nila na ngayon binibenta nila ito sa gobyerno at a price na walang ano, no, na no profit. Possibly, pag binenta na, of course, sa private sector as a commercially available product, baka hindi same price as kung ano yung binibenta nila sa mga gobyerno ngayon. FDA Director General Eric Domingo also explains, once a vaccine manufacturer is granted with a CPR, they will take full responsibility once a vaccine experiences adverse events following immunization. The uh, CPR holder or the company that owns the product it will be required to monitor the product as it, you know, as it is ano, uh, distributed in the market. So, nagkakaroon, mas lumalaki ngayon yung nagiging ano, na, na, responsibilidad din ng CPR. FDA has also sent letters to vaccine manufacturers asking them if they are interested to apply for a certificate of product registration in the country. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippines today recorded 12,067 new COVID-19 infections, even as 10 accredited testing laboratories failed to submit data on time in its 4 p in its 4 p.m. IE. Even as 10 testing laboratories failed to submit data on time. Department of Health or DOH said the latest figure pushed the cumulative tally to 1,869,691 active cases to 127,703 of the active cases. Of the active cases, 95.5% are mild, 1.7% are asymptomatic, 0.93% are moderate, 1.2% are severe, and 0.6% are in critical condition. Meanwhile, 14,565 have recovered from the viral disease, bringing the total recoveries to 1,709,724. The COVID-related deaths rose to... Several online services offer reproduction of COVID-19 vaccination cards made of polyvinyl chloride or PVC. But the Department of the Interior and Local Government seeks the legality of its production. Asher Kadapan Jr. details why. Reproducing vaccination card poses a threat against an individual's personal information. 
This is why the Department of the Interior and local government is now looking into the possibility of taking legal actions against individuals offering to reproduce the vaccination cards. DILG spokesperson Undersecretary Jonathan Malaya says they may need to make sure the public is protected from any unlawful acts. Perhaps we'll ask our legal to study uh, kung uh, may kaso yung mga nag-offer ng ganitong service. Reproducing the proof of vaccination by photocopying, scanning, or by replacing it using polyvinyl chloride or PVC cards will be a waste of money and time. This is because corresponding establishments or conveyances require original copy of COVID-19 vaccination cards. We don't advise na pumuha tayo ng mga PVC bakuna cards na yan. Kasi para ang nangyari, hindi na yan yung original. Instead of reproducing the vaccination cards, Malaya advises the public to just laminate or put them in a plastic ID holder for protection. Meanwhile, the country's digital COVID-19 vaccination certificate portal is ready to be launched by the Department of Information and Communications Technology in September. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The deadline for the distribution of financial aid for residents affected by the Enhanced Community Quarantine or ECQ ends tomorrow. However, several local government units have beat the deadline. JP Nunez reports. Low-income households continue to receive their cash aid despite the change in quarantine classification in Metro Manila. In Caloocan City, the local government has completed its distribution of ayuda worth 1.34 billion pesos. It took 12 days for the city government to finish the distribution to over 400,000 residents. Officials attribute the use of technology for the fast distribution. Nag-hire po si mayor ng uh, service provider. So naging mabilis po yung paraan kasi... Ever since sila naman po ang hinahire pag camera pong payout, kaya po medyo maganda po yung flow. Patero City Mayor Ike Ponce III also confirmed to UNTV that the municipality finished distributing their cash aid. According to Mayor Ponce, they are only processing the complaints by residents. In Mandaluyong City, 90% of its financial assistance have been distributed. Only the cash aid for bedridden senior citizens are left for distribution. Ang nangyayari na lang ngayon, nagbabahay-bahay na kami sa mga bedridden, senior citizen, gano'n na lang. Naglilinis na lang. The government has distributed 75% of the cash aid allotment for Metro Manila worth 10.89 billion pesos. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque assures qualified beneficiaries will still receive their cash assistance. Habang hindi niyo po po natatanggap ang ayuda ninyo, maski na ibaba ng sa MHQ o classification, tatanggapin niyo pa rin po ang ayuda na intended para doon sa panahon na ito. LGUs who will not finish the distribution of cash aid tomorrow can request for an extension. JP Nunez, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippine National Police or PNP has recorded 178,101 quarantine violators nationwide in just three days. The existing community quarantine in just three days from August 21st to August 23. Of the said number, 39,392 are from the National Capital Region, while 121,111 were from Laguna, Cavite, Rizal, and Bulacan. Most of the recorded violators failed to comply with the minimum protocols and health standards, followed by curfew violators and non-authorized persons outside of residence or non-APOR. PNP Chief of Police General Guillermo Lazar says, although quarantine status in Metro Manila has been downgraded to modified enhanced community quarantine, tiny bubbles or checkpoints are still in place. Para sa mga consumer app or nabibili o mag-aabil nito, pareho pa rin po. Isa lang from every household na magdadala ng quarantine pass, lalabas lang sila during non-carpew hours at doon pa rin sila sa loob ng kanilang mga cities. The Department of Education hopes to reach 26 million enrollees for the school year 2021-2022. But DepEd admits they are still far from their target number as of, as of now. Dante Amento will tell us why live. Dante, go ahead. 
Diego, based on the latest enrollment quick count of the Department of Education, there are only about 7.9 million learners currently enrolled for the incoming school year. Secretary Leonor Briones says the low turnout may be due to the, the economic collapse brought by the COVID-19 pandemic. That is why DEPET is exhausting all means to encourage parents as well as learners to sign up for enrollment. As part of their program, DepEd utilizes social media pages and even government TV stations to inform the public on the enrollment that has already started last August 16. DepEd is also asking for the local government units assistance as well as different agencies to promote this effort. All of you, uh, private sector uh, um, as well, communications groups like PCOO. Uh, salamat na salamat sa inyo lahat. And um, we look forward. Um, I seek your help. I seek your assistance in uh, our campaign to urge our children to enroll. DEPET has only 20 days left before the opening of classes on September 13. Enrollment may be done through text, call, email, and sending online messages. DEPED said that in lower risk areas, limited physical submission of enrollment forms may be allowed as long as the minimum public health standards are complied with. And that's the latest slide. Back to you, Diego. Thank you for that report, Dante Amento. The Bureau of Internal Revenue clarified that not all social media influencers earning from online platforms are obliged to pay their taxes. However, however, all earners are required to register at the BIR. Marvin Callas details why. The Bureau of the Internal Revenue urged all social media influencers to register and pay for their respective taxes from their earnings in the online media platforms to avoid facing charges. BIR Deputy Commissioner for Legal Group Attorney Marisa Cabreros, on the other hand, addressed the concerns of other small-time earners in the online platform who struggles to make ends meet. Kung yung annual net income ninyo po sa buong taon is hindi naman po lalagpas sa 250,000, 0% po ang tax rate niyan. So wala pong babayarang income tax. Kaya yung sinasabi po ng iba na maliit lang kami, uh, wala naman kami gaanong kinikita pa, uh, wala ho silang dapat ikatakot. The official further identified individuals who fall under the obligation of registering and declaring their net income at the BIR. Basta um, lahat po ng ating mga nasa online ang, ang means of kita. Kumikita sila, binabayaran sila sa kahit anong klase ng serbisyo na ginagawa online. Lahat po ng taxpayers, individual at korporasyon na tumatanggap ng income in cash or in kind na ginagamit ang media site or any other platform at any activity performed on those sites and platform basta po kumikita sila because of it sila po ang tinutukoy natin na kailangan magrehistro yun nga lang po ang mga famous po as example are our YouTubers yung nag uh, Live streaming sa Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, uh, Reddit, Snapchat, and all other platforms po. Attorney Cabreros explains that the Bureau is only implementing the government's mandate, warning all tax evaders for the charges they might face, such as the unlawful pursuit of business, non-issuance of official receipts, and tax evasion charges, including a possible imprisonment and a fine of up to 10 million pesos for anyone not paying the right taxes. Marvin Callas, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Some potential candidates in the upcoming elections have weighed in on President Rodrigo Duterte's acceptance of the ruling party PDP Laban's endorsement for him to run for the second highest post in the land. But for an opposition group, the vice presidential bid of the president is legally and morally wrong. This report will tell us why. 
The Lacson Soto tandem remains unfazed by President Rodrigo Duterte's bid to run for vice president in the upcoming elections. In a statement, Senate President Vicente Soto III, who will also vie for the vice presidential post, says it is good to know so that the people won't be guessing anymore. He adds it does not affect his resolve in running for the same position. For Senator Panfilo Lacson, it will not matter to their determination to run in the elections. Lacson hopes that the voters will not be affected by fear and intimidation in choosing the country's next leaders. With the infighting within the ruling party, the group of Senator Coco Pimentel says they will let their presidential candidate to choose his or her running mate. He also noted that choosing the vice presidential candidate first before naming the presidential candidate is an unusual convoluted process. In the Kusi faction, PDP Laban Secretary General Attorney Melvin Matibag says they are willing to wait for Senator Christopher Bongo's decision despite his pronouncements that he is still not interested to run for the presidency. For his part, Senator Richard Gordon, who is also mulling over running for president, reiterates his reservations on the vice presidential bid of President Duterte. If the president runs for vice president, Certainly, it will be up to the people to accept that. Ako sa akin, out of delicadesa, hindi ko gagawin yan. Angal kayo ng angal sa dynasty. And if the president is doing that, he will be followed by many others in the country. Tutunod yeah. sa kanya lahat yan. Ang ginagawa ng presidente, ba't ako hindi pwede? Meanwhile, for opposition group Isambayan, the acceptance of President Duterte comes as no surprise. The group believes it shows a clear mockery of the constitution and the country's democratic process. For Isambayan, the VP run of the chief executive is both legally and morally wrong, noting that it is obviously driven by fear of accountability from the International Criminal Court and from the justice system. Because of this, the group says they are more determined in fielding a unified alternative slate for the upcoming elections. Jorge Delgado, UN TV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of Budget and Management has slashed the proposed budget of the Commission on Elections. From 41.992 billion pesos, it was reduced to 26.497 billion pesos, according to the 2022 National Expenditure Program submitted by the DBM. The Kamalek had sought the 41.9 billion peso budget as it planned to hold a successful 2022 elections amid the coronavirus pandemic. For those watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. And for the news abroad, critical importance of safety considerations has been highlighted due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Contentious issue brought to the forefront is the efficacy of different types of face masks. Jenry Lombos tells us the details. A recent study shows that N95 and K95 masks offer a substantially higher filtration efficiency of 46% and 60% respectively, compared to commonly used face cloth coverings or surgical masks which have lower mitigation properties against airborne disease transmission. Findings published in the journal Physics of Fluids in Waterloo University indicated that these medical masks filtered out more than 50% of the exhaled aerosol accumulated indoor that can potentially spread COVID-19 virus when inhaled by people. The effectiveness of the different types of masks was examined by simulating a person's breathing and exhalation of aerosol droplets, which are approximately 0.001 millimeters in diameter, suspended in the air in a large unventilated room. Health officials around the world primarily believe that SARS-CoV-2 virus was spread through droplets by sneezing, talking, or coughing. However, earlier this year, a number of experts acknowledged aerosols as the most dominant transmission of COVID-19. One professor of the study did not dismiss the fact that wearing face coverings is useful, but pointed out the notable difference in the effectivity of various types of masks. Data analysis from Yerusevich team proves that high-quality N95 and KN95 masks paired with high ventilation capacity are best at warding off COVID-19. Jenry Lombos, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God.
The federal government of Australia rescued over 600 more people out of Afghanistan as their evacuation missions intensify. Marvi Dolphin will tell us how live. Yes, Marvi? Real 650 people have been successfully evacuated overnight from Afghanistan through four Royal Australian Air Force and one New Zealand Air Force flights, which managed to land at Kabul International Airport. The evacuees were taken to rest at a temporary camp at Australia's main operation base in Middle East before they leave for Australia. According to Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison, this is an intense and the largest night of evacuations. The Prime Minister also emphasized that the country would continue its rescue operations, treating every flight as the last. This is due to the unpredictable situation under the Taliban and the red line warning where countries only have one week left before they need to leave. The evacuation flights will continue for as long as we can continue to operate and get people out. Meanwhile, over a thousand people, which includes Australian citizens, Afghan and other foreign nationals have been rescued in 12 flights from Kabul by Australia with the assistance of partner countries in the past week. I can report that with the assistance of partners in the United Kingdom and the United States, we've been able to evacuate more than a thousand people in 12 flights from Kabul since last Wednesday. Muriel? Marvi, you mentioned there is only one week left to the Taliban's red line to withdraw. Is there any negotiations for extension to allow complete evacuation of Afghan allies and uh, foreign nationals? Riel, the Pentagon or U.S. Department of Defense has not ruled out keeping its troops in Afghanistan past the deadline. Australia and other nations have shown willingness to support the extended evacuation. However, the Taliban made clear that the red line to withdraw would be August 31 and beyond that would be a violation of the withdrawal agreement. Back to you, Riel. Thank you, Marvidal Finn reporting live from Perth, Australia. The United States Food and Drug Administration announced yesterday its full approval of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine. Therese Longbowen will provide us the details live. Yes, Therese, good evening. Good evening, Marielle. After months of being under emergency use authorization, Pfizer-BioNTech became the first approved COVID-19 vaccine by the U.S. FDA, now with its brand name, Comirnaty. This approval can give confidence to the public to get vaccinated, according to Acting FDA Commissioner Dr. Janet Woodcock. As the first FDA-approved COVID-19 vaccine, the public can be confident that this vaccine meets the FDA's gold standards for safety, effectiveness, and manufacturing quality that we require for an approved product. U.S. President Joe Biden himself encouraged the people to be vaccinated now that it is fully approved. If, you have, if you're one of the millions of Americans who said that they uh, will not get the shot when it's, until it has full and final approval of the FDA, it has now happened. The moment you've been waiting for is here. It's time for you to go get your vaccination and get it today. Following the approval of community, a requirement for vaccination was announced by Pentagon for military service members, as well as all New York City public school staff, according to Mayor Bill de Blasio. The approved vaccine can be used for prevention of COVID-19 in individuals 16 years old and above, while still being under emergency use authorization for ages 12 to 15 years old, as well as the administration of third dose for immunocompromised individuals. Marielle? Thank you, Therese Longbowen, for that live report. After its postponement of one year, the 2020 Tokyo Paralympics finally opens its 16th edition of sporting events tonight. Pasilito Likido will tell us the details live. Yes, Pasilito, please go ahead. Mariel, the Paralympics officially kicked off tonight on the 24th of August 
and it will run until the 5th of September. 4,400 athletes from 176 countries will be competing in 22 sporting events. An impressive mention is Australia entering with the highest number of Paralympians in their team of 179 athletes. To name a few, the Paralympic Games are composed of archery, football, judo, powerlifting, sitting volleyball, table tennis, wheelchair basketball, and wheelchair tennis. Additionally, two new sports will, which fans can look forward to are taekwondo and bad badminton. However, due to current COVID-19 restrictions, Paralympic fans will still not be able to attend the sporting event physically, but they can continue to show their support and excitement virtually just, left, just like they did during the recent Olympics. Riel? Joselito, how does the Paralympic Committee make sure that athletes can compete fairly? Riel, the Paralympics looked at the so-called classifications of the Paralympians. These classifications are categories and standards which determine the various levels of disabilities of athletes. Uh, this then allows the Paralympic Committee to classify and categorize eligible athletes into appropriate sporting games for a fair competition. Back to you, Mariel. All right, Joselito Dikido, thank you for that live report. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Mariela Toza reporting live from Perth, Australia. Good evening. A community in Agusan del Norte province need not walk a long way just to fetch a pail of water. This after Wish 1075 granted the residents sim a simple wish for clean water that's within their reach. Sometimes, it's easy for us to forget just how blessed we are. With a simple turn of the faucet, out comes a life-saving resource that we can easily utilize. For drinking, bathing, washing, cooking, and many things in between. This resource is water, and it is essential for human survival. While most of us take access to clean water for granted, those who wake up early, walk for hours, and haul heavy water containers on their backs to bring them home are always aware of its great importance. They are the residents of Barangay Vinapur, one of the eight villages in the coastal municipality of Carmen in the province of Agusan del Norte. The problem namin dito pinakamahirap ng tubig, tapos malayo doon sa bundok ng mga half kilometer. Hindi ito makakadaan ng kariton, walang daanan. Ito na lang, pinapasan lang namin. Araw-araw, palagi pupunta ka doon. Tapos magpila kayo doon. Maraming tao doon mag, ano, magpila. Kumuha ng tubig. Kailangan pang magpila. Ang iba ay eh, nag-aaway na. Dahil sa dami ng ano, galon. Tapos maubusan pa. Mga isa doon ha. Kaya magmotor naman. Ang uban magtod ang kariton. Ang bata, kuguson na lang ng Wilkins. Antog alas 12, mabot alas 3. Ang nagang giipikto. Kaya ang labunon na mo, mabot magtagsinima na. Ulti mo, pagplas sa CR, awa na. Mabarado na dito. Nawa na may tubig kaya ang container bisag unsa o pagkuan uyog ni mo wala magimo tulo. Hindi pa nagkaligo. Dahil sa hirap ng ano eh. Walang tubig. Eh minsan nasira pa yung makina. Nay uban tulo ra ka container kay di nakasaud kay maabutan sa wanay agas ang bomba na manang uban matun lang pud sa laing lugar sa Agustin. Situated near the Butuan Bay and home to scenic tourist beaches, the bodies of water around Barangay Vinapur provide the residents livelihood opportunities. But while the bountiful seas allow the community to fish and make a living, the residents severely lacked potable water for their daily activities. Lahat kami dito ay mangingisda lang. Tapos ang maubos namin sa isang araw, mga isang daan. 
sa tubig lang yan. Pag mayroong dumating na masamang panahon, malakas ang hangin, hindi kami magpagpangisda, wala din kaming pera. Wala din kaming magpalit na tubig. Pag hindi abagat, makapangisda kami. Pag kabagat, wala. O dalawang linggo na, mahigit mo, hangin, walang income. Tapos sa paghanap din ng pera, hirap na rin. Paano kami makapagbili pag hindi kami nagpagpangisda? Apart from fishing, their second source of income, agriculture, is also affected by the inadequacy of their water supply. And ako kayong problema dere sa tubig o sa panginabuhi po na mo dere. Musaking kundre o tag 40 ka container kaya kung i-express o ma. Pinalit ka na siya o niya. Gipalit na siya o tag 5 ang container. Ipabiyahe po na ako o tag 15 ang container. Kaya layo-layo man mga isa ka kilometro ka pin. Sa kaharbisa na ako, sige na. Sa usa lang kalunaw. Pikto kapag walang tubig, ito na eh. Kahit sa mga pananim namin, nasira na. Hindi na namin mapagkunan kasi hindi kami nakapagdidilig sa kanila. Halos mamatay na ang aming mga pananim dahil walang tubig. For Ronald, Mildred, and all of the breadwinners in Barangay Vinapor, being unable to fish and harvest produce means being unable to put food on the tables and water in their homes. On average, the residents spend about 60 to 100 pesos a day to buy water for various daily needs such as cooking, drinking, and bathing. Gastos, magbili kami ng 20 pesos yung ano, nature spring. 3 pesos yung kuan, container, bili namin. 5, so 15 pesos. Ang iba, pumapalit na lang. Yung isang galon, 10 piso. Isang araw, ang maubos namin, mga 10 galon. Pag lahat kami naliligo. Mahirap. Tapos yung binili namin na bigas, magbigay ko sa anak ko, hindi kasya. Blugaw lang kami. Isang baso na bigas. Glugo kami para makakain. As part of WISH 1075's 7th anniversary, the station granted what the residents have long wished for. Easy access to clean water that is free of charge. WISH 1075 installed a motorized potable water system that will benefit around 200 families in the area. When the water system was debuted to the community, WISH 1075 also donated new water gallons and pails for each household and prepared hearty meals for all residents. Hulog ng langit naging siguro ni nga naingin ni nga di motor pa gud pastang hayahayas eh sobrang blessings po sa amin kasi lahat ng tao dito nagpapasalamat sa Panginoon dumating na yung pangarap namin na magkakaroon kami ng tubig na malapit sa amin pasalamat mi anak dako sa OS 1075 kay pasalamat kay murag hingabot ra man gud sa mo ang kanang grasya ang ay gud namo nga ampingan kay hatag na guna siya the residents of Barangay Vinapur now have a steady supply of potable water, not to take for granted, but to always treasure and conserve, much like the precious blessing and gift of love that it is. Happy 7th anniversary, Wish 1075. Before we close, we will leave you with the final word, giving glory to God. From the book of Proverbs, chapter 25, verse 21, it says, If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat, and if, if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. And those are the reasons behind the news, August 24, 2021. I am Herlin Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, Mangido Castro III. 
And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Kaya naman ng mga private sector hospital yan eh. Bumikita naman sila. <laughs> so, yung mga small hospitals, sa tingin namin, baka pwedeng humingi tayo ng subsidy sa government kung hindi kakayanin ng mga small hospitals. So, nagkakataon ng, na, sa, sa par, panahon ko na na issue, siguro, I would say siguro na uh, this was triggered, uh, primarily triggered by number one, yung investigation sa kwan, investigation sa sa Senado uh, about uh, about uh, yung uh, yung findings ng kuha the administration of due process we want a third party unbiased and impartial or the implementation of a jury of medical experts